Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here. This is the Astrological Winds Channel, and I'm going to take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for the week of July 11th through the 17th. And you're not going to get to see my face today. As you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, that is, I've got the chart up for the main event this week, which is a very powerful full moon in Capricorn going on and it really is the centerpiece of this week. Um, first, a little business. Um, the Astrological Winds channel is a free service. It's available on YouTube every week, and if you have a YouTube account, you can become a follower and, um, and turn on your notifications, and every time I put up a blog on it, you will get notified. And that is a great, great way to make sure you don't miss any. Um, it is a free service, like I said, and the best way you guys could pay me back is to pass on the information to anyone that you know who might be interested in um, astrology and getting a weekly astrology report. Um, if you want to give a donation, and some people do occasionally, that's fine. Um, my handle at Benno is at Matthew with two T's, dash Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. And you can also look me up on PayPal or Zelle. Um, the pot, the, the um, Astrological Winds Channel is also available on many different podcasts and most of the time, there's really no need to actually see the video. It's usually my face or a chart. If you're interested in seeing the chart, I can see that. Um, but really, the listening point is really the important thing. And for those of you who don't know astrology or don't know it well, remember, don't get lost on the astrological terms. I am going to mention them for people who do know them. But what you really want to listen to is like the words in between, what that means, what the description of that energy is. That's what's important for you. You really don't need to know why that's happening. But if you know the energy of this week is a certain way, you can actually make some wiser decisions, perhaps, based on on that and knowing that energy. So there's no need to focus on that. Um, also, the Astrological Wings channel, I post the link on Instagram every week. So if you have an Instagram account, as soon as I'm done here, just go and become a follower and you get bonus material too because usually a couple days a week at least, I will mention some other stuff that's going on specifically for that day. Um, and it's not a video or audio format that way. It's just some, you know, just um, a written comment. So it's really easy to check just like less than a minute. And you get to see some bonus stuff just built for that day. <clears throat> so that's um, what's really important. But yeah, there's my email right down there. If you, I am a professional astrologer. I've been doing charts for over 20 years. If you need any kind of reading, um, just contact me at that email. That's the other best way you guys can support me. Um, when you do need a reading, and I do recommend get a predictive one every year around your birthday, um, please, you know, um, you know, support me and, um, you know, get a reading. Or if you know someone else who needs a reading, you know, let them know about me. Have them check the channel out and see if they feel good about where I'm coming from. And, all right, um, so yeah, just wanted to get through those basics. I know a lot of people don't make it to the end of the blog, so I don't want to just put it at the end, but the information's on the card down there on the corner too today Well, I'm showing this full moon in Capricorn. Um, so really, there's, you know, the full moon, it really is a very dynamic and um, full moon. The rooster's kind of coming home to roost. And as you can see, it's at 22 degrees, 2112, 2121 actually, of Capricorn. Um, there's your moon and cap opposite the sun in 
cancer. And what's really interesting on this one is how many other planets and bodies it's pulling in. If you see here, the moon is conjunct Pluto, so we've got Pluto involved, and the sun is conjunct Mercury and the asteroid Ceres, so we got those two involved. And then we're getting a T-square to Eris and Chiron, so we've got those two involved. And then when you think about the ruler of the um, of this full moon, it would be Saturn. And so Saturn's involved and Saturn's in a tight trine to Venus. So Venus is kind of pulled in and Saturn's also squaring the nodal axis. So you can see almost all, everything in the chart is kind of lighting up in, in this full moon. So it really, you know, a lot of these aspects perfect all during the week. The full moon is actually on Wednesday and so it's right in the middle of the week so it's really going we're really going to be feeling it all week long really is what it comes down to um so yeah so you know and this, you know so when you think about the moon in capricorn you know the moon in capricorn is in detriment and, and which means you know traditionally it's a weak position the weakest position for the moon to be in and the moon is all about emotions mainly and security and that's why it's in detriment in Capricorn because that is the place where it is most restricted emotionally so that's you know kind of gonna be a lot of the flavor of this full moon is having to deal with different kinds of limits and restrictions that are coming on to us um, especially the emotional part of it and what is tied up with emotions is usually our security and so like security type issues and then obviously in this world that we're in today right now with the economic downturn and a lot of the other things going on a lot of our basic securities and needs do feel very restricted and limited right now but this is like the kind of full moon and Capricorn is frugal kind of it's conservative it wants it, it knows how to get by with just enough and can survive it is very tenacious like that and very wise actually it knows how to survive even in hard times but it has kind of an older energy which can be like more tired kind of worn out but also very wise, like I said, and it's very much in touch with the natural rhythms that are going on, um, um, on, you know, on the physical earth level, being an earth sign. So, it, you know, the thing with Capricorn is, you know, with the moon and Capricorn too, is it wants to control the situation. You know, it really, you know, that's the way it feels that, you know, it, when it gets triggered emotionally and stressed out, it just feels like it has to take control, that that it has the wisdom that others around it may not have, and it can get very responsible, practical, and really when it comes to emotions with Capricorn, it's more of like taking care of yourself emotionally inside. So it's kind of like an, an interesting thing there. now. What's kind of a little bit of a play on this one is we do have the conjunction down here with Pluto, retrograde. So they're come, you know, they're moving towards one another. Obviously, the moon moves a lot quicker, and they're about what six degrees apart. So they'll be exact in about twelve hours or so after it. But um, but that is a little bit of a danger to me on the Capricorn side because you know basically. When that moon Pluto conjunction is triggering, it can bring up some really deep, intense emotions inside us. And we really can get into like a power tripping kind of energy about it, like either trying to control others based on the emotions coming out of us, or like really like falling into kind of like power trips where you're, you're pushing one another and you're looking into some really deep shadow stuff inside yourself and then all of a sudden 
what you think you see as your truth, you know, you're going to try to control and manipulate and coerce or even propagandize others to get what you want. So, so, you know, this can, you know, you know, really bring up a lot of emotional intensity and stress between people, but you really are feeling like this really deep emotional stuff. So there's a little bit of a danger in that part of this, that of trying to be too controlling. Um, yes, you know, that, like I said, the moon in Capricorn needs to take care of its own emotions internally, but like, you know, if it's trying to control the whole environment and other people around it, then it can be very, get really into this power trippy, struggling kind of thing. So the opposition, and full moon is obviously an opposition between the sun and moon, and it's coming to Cancer. And what's interesting is, you know, Cancer is the moon's sign that it likes to be in. It's the moon's the sign the moon rules. So interestingly enough, the moon is what we're saying, what we say, giving reception to the sun and cancer and, and actually lending, you know, some of the energy to the sun that it normally has about like a nicer cancer energy. So that sun and cancer really wants like it wants affection, it wants emotional input, it wants tenderness, um, it wants to care for and love, you know, others, and, and, and especially, um, you know, the people that are close to it, and, you know, and, you know, it's, it's basically um, a conditional love that's, that's really, based on on the emotions and when when cancer's feeling good and i've said this before you know it really you know will output the love and affection and the caring of others but when it's under stress it will try to control and manipulate others so that's like what's going on with the full moon is you, you know it's going to feel a lot of that stress that energy of the full moon in Capricorn and and it can you know bring it you know basically put us in a situation where we are at odds possibly with other people um, you know and at cross purposes even with ourself with the emotional part of ourself versus the will part of ourself so it's a very 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 interesting mix and then you bring in the conjunction to cancer, I mean, to Mercury and cancer, too, and, like, our thoughts are really being driven by our emotions right now, too, so that can, you know, also bring a lot of imbalance in, and then you have Ceres up there, too, which shows that a lot of these thoughts are based around, once again, not being able to get the security and nurturing and love that we need. But that sun, sun Mercury gives us a very subjective viewpoint, you know, and, and we really can be wrapped up in our own emotions in, in, and unable to really take a lot of input in. We're kind of lost in, in, in our own ideas and emotions and our own mind and really experiencing that and, and wanting to, you know, output it more than, than take more in. So we may not be as receptive to others' ideas, you know, but we do have a lot of ideas of our own that we'd like others to hear out. So that can be a little bit tricky with the sun, Mercury this week conjunct, and I'll get more into that a little bit later. Now, also, like I said, we have them square, both the sun and moon and the Ceres, Mercury, and Pluto are all squaring Chiron and Eris. And, you know, so this shows that, you know, there is like, what we call it, it's called the T-square, and it's a cardinal T-square, and it's a, there's a lot of chaotic change going on right now. And, and it really shows that, you know, people are under a lot of stress, things are changing very quickly and rapidly and it can get a lot of very upsetting and then when you think about the square to Chiron 
people are, you know, it hurts. It's actually a wounding kind of thing. It has us off balance and it has us very sensitive emotionally. So it's very difficult to find the right balance right now. And everyone may be feeling a little bit awkward trying to figure out where that new point of balance is, you know. So so it's very, very, very interesting on that level. And, I, and once again, it's the resources and, and that kind of thing in the real world that may be the source of a lot of the emotional distress that's going on inside us. And, and you know, and, and like I said, it has us retreat within with the Capricorn. And it's very difficult to communicate the emotional part. And then even when we do, the Mercury in Cancer can get it kind of like um, irrational, you know, um, not not logical, not objective, very subjective energy, uh, Sun, Mercury, and Cancer. Um, so the open, so, you know, solutions, there are a couple interesting solutions to this energy built into this. And, and so one of them is the, the open end of the T-square is Libra. And so what's that saying? That the solution to a lot of these problems is forming partnerships with others, forming, um, you know, alliances with others over, you know, some of the issues that we're having. And then also the ruler is that Saturn in Aquarius and Saturn, you know, also rules Capricorn, but that's the more traditional part of Saturn. The Saturn in Aquarius is reminding itself, hey, you know, there's a higher octave that sometimes the system needs an upgrade to. And that, you know, when, when a system starts to break down, obviously it's time to do that. And that's what's happening now. You see Saturn is squaring the nodes. And those nodes, as I said, are on that resource axis of Taurus and Scorpio. And we're feeling a lot of the South Node and Scorpio, the old things, the old ways of keeping power and money and all that are not working. You know, and it's bringing up a lot of emotional intensity. And here we got Uranus conjunct the North Node, squaring that Saturn, saying we've got to find new ways to do this. Like there's a lot of that tied up in there. So that is really showing once again that, you know, we really need to face the fact that a lot of the structure in our lives is changing and that we need to like start introducing new changes and that there are ways, you know, North Node and Libra both saying form partnerships with other people, alliances with other groups. That's the way to go in this situation. Now note too, Saturn is in a very tight trine to Venus, which once again is saying the same thing. Stable, look for stable, reliable, solid, practical relationships to help each other through, to help each other out. Business type relationships, things that where you can like negotiate, sit down, talk things out, get practical, be serious about, you know, what your discussions and negotiations are, but also find a reliability in others. And interestingly enough, on this very same day, check this out, Mercury is sextile Uranus. So that shows there's opportunities for brilliant new ideas to get introduced between people, into systems, sharing information that can really be exciting. Like, you know, this could be an opportunity to change a lot of these things about resources, you know, and that we can use our mind. We're going to have to, you know, maybe the emotion can be the thing that is the necessary component to it, to the new invention. What's the necessity is the mother of invention, right? Well, maybe the emotional necessity behind Mercury Cancer will be the mother of invention with this other energy of Mercury Uranus North Node sextile that, you know, there's that need and okay, like, you know, so, the, so we can change things and have new opportunities, new directions to go into, 
new ways of shifting things, new solutions to old problems, you know, um, things like that. Um, getting, you know, just getting to the roots of things and studying it and getting new insight and getting new information, new ideas, and sharing that with people. And interestingly enough, too, that very same day, Venus is sextiling Eris. So it shows that, yes, once again, relationships bring the opportunity for positive change. And now, there is a danger, though, still, too. Note, too, that Venus is exactly square Neptune. Also, I told you guys, everything is tied into this full moon, it seems, this week, practically, huh? We've just about hit every planet at this point. But the square to Neptune is really interesting because, you know, it shows that, you know, other people may not be quite ready for a lot of the ideas that you have, especially the ones that are really idealistic. So you can't get disappointed or, dis you know, or dis um, discouraged by others who might not be able to quite reach out to the level that you, you know, feel that you're going to yourself. So once again, it may show that, you know, the best you can do is hope that they, you know, can get to that level and you can try to keep to encourage them. But you got to also make sure you're not kidding yourself about it and not, you know, you know, in a kind of state of safety of self-delusion about um, hoping for the best in others, you know, who really, you know, aren't, you know, maybe, maybe able to deal with that, with the current situation and circumstances of not only life in general, but how that's affecting them. Now, what's interesting, though, the Saturn, the Saturn is there and the Neptune is there. So, to me, there's a like, you know, both affecting Venus is what I mean. They're, you know, you got the square and the trine. So my thought on this is that, you know, right now that there's a balance possibly there too where we can interject ideals into relationships and into reality in a solid way and ultimately, you know, maybe get some stability and in relationships and have them shifting into a higher level for us. So very interesting full moon, you know, ultimately this full moon really, you know, says emotionally, we may need to take care of a lot of the intense emotions ourselves inside. But as far as like the things that may be triggering them, there may be a lot of practical solutions out there by connecting with others to help each other out in practical ways, you know, in, in, in real world ways. So what you want to do, look at where 22 degrees is in your chart, um, which houses they fall in for Cancer and Capricorn. And those are the two houses that will be most affected for you personally in your life, the areas of your life. And, and then again, any planets you have that are in the 21, 22, 23 degree area will also making some aspects. Now, I just want to real quick to get back to the Sun conjunct Mercury. So there it is up there. On Sunday, it will be exact next week on the weekend. And so next weekend, the Sun, both of the Sun and Mercury will be conjunct and they'll be exactly trining Neptune. And so that's really interesting. And also quincunxing Saturn, because like I told you, like, first of all, Sun, Sun, it's a superior conjunction, so there's going to be a lot of communications going on. There's going to be a lot of information coming in, a lot of stimulation of the mind of all types. You're going to be getting that from all angles. And, and getting your point across is going to be really important in that, too. In fact, people aren't really great listeners when there's a superior conjunction of the Sun and Mercury. Um, we're really more stuck in our own inner world, um, and we're more interested in outputting that and trying to get others to hear about what we say but it's a great great time to start new projects and you know to start new businesses to start new hobbies to new ventures we really really live our lives 
of experiences very subjectively, subjectively and deeply during a Sun Mercury conjunction. So it's a very, um, very active energy. You know, the mind is awake. Um, it, it's really, and, and so is the body, and they're feeding one another in a really good way. It's also good for like travel, you know, um, good for just like, you know, like I said, any kind of communication and business type. Now, the trying to Neptune is interesting too. So that it really shows there's a great flow with your ideals right now that they're very like that they're being appealed to that you know in some way in some very and you had some very special moments you know next weekend of beauty you know of reverie of you know of just like your ideals being met that in reality it seems like maybe somehow reality and your ideals somehow have been, found a meeting point a nexus point and so you can feel really good emotionally um, really at balance and peace and can get a lot of spiritual and insight that way too, mystical insight, things like that. Um, also very sensitive to psychic energy. So like can really pick up on energy, maybe communicate in different ways that are non-verbally, um, have kind of like mystical or psychic type experiences either with yourself or even others. So, you know, that kind of energy is a lot more available to be tapped into too, but it also is very much about artistic output, very inspired by what's going on and anyone who has any art in them, which is everybody, everybody, you know, find what, out what art you are and it's a time where you can really output that with whatever that is. Now, the queen comes to Saturn is interesting because to me it almost seems like we're, we're saying to the things that are blocking us, the authorities and the issues and the hard reality, no, I, I'm, I'm separating from you under this energy and I'm, I'm going away. But, you know, it is, you know, an opportunity for many of us who may be very rigid and structured and have a hard time with change, a time where we can really let go of some of that stuff and try to overcome some of the fears of some of that stuff and 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 look around you and see you know how other people are maybe you know having you know fun or a better time and you know and maybe just trying to like blend into that energy and Neptunian energy and let go let go of a lot of the things that you know pain you and fear you so very interesting now the last thing I wanted to mention a couple more things with Venus so Venus will be going into cancer next weekend also and I really think Venus loves cancer that's my opinion I know I think to me after Taurus and after Libra and Pisces I think Venus's next favorite sign is cancer and after you know observing astrology for over 30 years I feel like that's a very wise um wise uh, viewpoint and so really um, when Venus is in Cancer it really wants to just be closer to its friends closer to its lovers affectionate with its loved ones you know um, really wants to give and receive a lot of emotional support it's a beautiful receptive energy friends and lovers and family are very very important now the only time it can get a little unbalanced if you don't feel like you have enough love in your life. Like, then you can get a little bit of, I don't want to say pushy, but kind of maybe get yourself a little bit awkward at times and trying, you know, to find that emotional support because, you know, some insecurity is maybe driving that when, you know, you feel like you're not getting the affection that you need. It may, you know, trigger some insecurities. But we're really, you know, just really into me, you know, um, you know, loving our friends and being loyal to our friends. And a lot of us too may connect more with our mothers during Venus and Cancer period. So that's a possibility for the couple weeks or so after next weekend too, while Venus travels to Cancer. Now Venus does Quincunx Pluto right before that too. And that's, you know, once again, it's a, it has a lot to do with learning about the kind of people we want in our life and don't want in our life. And a lot of people may put us through a lot of emotional stress or trigger deep 
emotions and we're you know and that's trying to show us parts of ourselves and you know we have to be careful about not projecting those parts back onto them and getting into a you know really just a non-stop um, power struggle with them um, you know where each other is trying to obsess or possess or manipulate the other so you know this is a time where we can really look at that and say to ourselves you know these are the kind of people I don't want to be around these are the kind of people I do want to be around you know and, and that kind of thing will really help you assess that all right well that does it for this week a pretty packed week that full moon is just like wow and, then, and we're looking at the Washington DC chart there and just note that as a side note look at how everything's over on this side of the chart on the western horizon saying the same thing to Washington DC the key to the next month is to make alliances in order to get through whatever is going on, you know, nationally too. But I really think that's the key to this, you know, this whole full moon on the practical level. On the practical level, this 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 week is saying there's a lot of change going on in the world, a lot of crazy things going on. You know, Sri Lanka is it, like I brought that up a couple of weeks ago. And look at where we've got at that point. Boris Johnson is gone. You know. The prime minister, the ex-prime minister of Japan is gone. A um, couple major oil spills over water aquifers. Just like a lot of things that are breaking down structurally, you know what I mean? And you know, so there's a lot of physical, you know, distress that, you know, that everybody who's a human, and that's all of us on the planet is going through. So we have to like, you know, deal with that. But I think like the emotional part is still like, like in this full moon it's going to be mainly de taking care of that yourself but there are a lot of opportunities to physically connect with others and groups to start to deal with some of these situations and realizing you know things have to change they just can't go on as they are you know there's one constant in life that is change so so we have to accept that and move on. All right, I'm Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds channel. It is available on YouTube every week. Right there, Astrological Winds channel. If you have a YouTube account, become a follower, turn on your notifications. You don't have to watch me. You don't have to look at this chart. You don't even have to listen to the words of the astrology. What you need to do is get the point of the energy in between, and that can be heard on many podcasts. Apple iPodcasts, Spotify, Reveal, many others. Just go to your favorite podcast, look up Astrological Winds Channel, and I'll probably be there. If I'm not on that one, find me on another. You can listen to me in the car. You don't have to be looking at a screen or wherever you're doing. You get the download every week. Um, I also post the link on Instagram. If you have an Instagram account, as soon as we're done here, become a follower because I do post daily updates sometimes too. Some, usually two, three, four times a week. I give a little daily comment, and it's not audio or video. You can see, read it in a few seconds and be done. And I'm also post the link on Facebook. My Facebook is a private account, but you're welcome to friend me, Matthew with two T's, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. That's how you can also look me up on Zelle or on PayPal or at Matthew-Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N on Venmo if you'd like to give a donation any amount is not too small but the best way you can pay me back for this free service that i offer every week is to pass it on to someone else as soon as we're done here so please do that I, i'm asking you guys and if you need a reading that's the best way to support me um email is m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com right there on the card m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com. Just contact me and we can talk about setting up a reading, get your birth chart done so you know the energy that's always with you your whole life and wherever you go. And then get a predictive reading every year around your birthday to know what's happening this year. And then I do children's charts, relationship charts, election charts if you're looking for the best time for it, starting something, a marriage or a business, something like that. Um, you know, fixed star readings for deeper soul purpose. Um, if your group needs a lecture or an astrologer to give mini readings, you know, contact me about that. Um, and I also have five beginners classes up on Dropbox. They're available for $25 a piece or $20 if you're a student with an ID. Um, and I can give you access.
access to them. So that's about it. Um, yeah, um, this should be an interesting week um, with the uh, with this full moon in the middle. And I'll see you guys all next week, and um, we will take a look at what's going on then. Until then, just try to find those alliances to help each other out.